Thank you, Sri Gopal Bhai. All the participants and everybody who are present here are going to definitely take care of whatever suggestions you have given to us. I'll just say two good lines on the basis of that. Sikandar halat ke aage kabhi jhukta nahi. Sikandar halat ke aage kabhi jhukta nahi. Tara tutkar bhi kabhi jami pe girta nahi. Tara tutkar bhi kabhi jami pe girta nahi. Girti hai hazaaron nadiya samundar pe. Girti hai hazaaron nadiya samundar pe. Kahi koi samundar ja ke nadi me gira hai. Kahi koi samundar ja ke gira hai nadi me. We are all very strong and we are sure. And let us promise everybody who have taken up this cause that we'll take care of all the problems of the wastewater management and fresh water. Can I uh, request Sri Muni Rawal, who is a very good consultant, who is a researcher, who is a scientist and a very grassroots level dedicated scientist. Let us welcome him with good hands. Let us welcome him. Announcement and let us recognize uh, Sri J. Soni, who is a DGM civil and we are sitting in the campus of DSFC. He has been preoccupied. He has just now arrived. Thank you, sir, for coming. Yes. Coming out, ki my friend. Galib Saab ka ek share hai. Galib Saab se baal shuru hua. Ki aakhri saas par pata chala Galib. Aakhri saas par pata chala Galib. कि जितने भी दोस्त थे सब के सब कमी नहीं थे हाँ मगर जिंदगी रोशन उन्हीं से थी I thank the organizers for giving me this opportunity but I submit my apology to the concerned authorities legislators planners and especially to the young generations that we are the coming now we have messed up this planet we did not behave responsibly and handing over you this trash this is how we go a Canadian scientist David Suzuki has written imagine a lake where the lake and lilies coexist in it Lilies grow exponentially and on 59th day the lake is only half covered and looks beautiful. On the 60th day, lilies will totally cover the lake and it will die. Environmental devastation is exponential and the cumulative effect hits at once and not with a warning. In terms of water scenario and water security, our planet is on 59th day. For, a, for the peace of a society, we need sound economy. And sound economy has two major parameters, food security and public health. Food security comes from agriculture and public health comes from sanitation. And both have water at the base. The moment we talk about urbanization, we have overlooked these two parameters because we have pushed agriculture far, far, far away from sanitation. The sanitation means what? Let us understand first sanitation basics. A lot of slides have been shown and good information is given. But what is sanitation? In today's planning, designing and architectural aesthetics, sanitation has been treated as a style or throwing away. I don't care. That's not sanitation. Sanitation means depathogenization of the human excrement. And on the other hand, recycling of the nutrients that we have 
discharged. So this is what we have. The privacy has taken priority over both the previous basic parameters and total aberrance to excreta. Let us understand two heavenly gifts the nature has given. CO2 is a metabolic waste and excreta is a biological waste of the body. And we both are crying, I mean we are crying over both these elements, now we have too much of CO2, we have too much of global warming, we have too much of this, we have too much of that. How can we survive? Okay, then the questions we end up with, are, globally we are 6 billion today and one out of six remains hungry. In 2050 we are expected to be around 10 billion. How many would remain hungry, undernourished, and suffer from malnutrition? And in spite of all the developments, why this curse? We have grossly misunderstood two unseparable heavenly gifts, carbon dioxide and excreta. Let's first understand CO2. CO2, the so objectionable subject today has C is the fundamental element of all living systems and O2 is essential for all biological activities during their cellular respiration. Now please do not confuse yourself with oxygen means oxygen breathing. Any energy release in a biological system needs oxygen for an efficient mechanism. So we have more CO2 plus H2 plus sun energy and of course chlorophyll. We have more stars, glucose, wood, etc., etc., and oxygen and of course biological energy, phosphate. This is all the phosphates, this is the most fertilizer complexes are showering on. That means more CO2 means more organic carbon and more oxygen. Then why this objection to CO2? Say even if photosynthetic machinery is available, what will be the scenario? The planet Earth before the industrial revolution was two-third of the planet surface is water, one-third land of which 50% was forest. Today, after 300 years of industrial revolution, only 9.4% is left as a forest. And even if we have all the forests today, it is taken that we have lot of CO2, lot of chlorophyll. To complete the food process, photosynthetic process, where is that extra water going to come from? The world, world water crisis, is it a myth or a reality? Let us see how much water do we have on the planet. Nikhil Bhai, Dakshish Bhai were talking. Mara society ma pani nati aadu, maro khaal ko ubrae chai. Aray bhai pani nati aadu to khaal ko ubrae ho ke bhi chate. This is a built-in contradiction. We have really gone somewhere wrong in recognizing the problem. A Canadian scientist has given this wonderful explanation. The entire water body on the earth if converted into a cube, each side of the cube would be 700 miles or 1120 kilometers. Out of that, only 77% 
is in the cycle. No, I, I, can you see my... Is, uh, okay. This, yeah, you can see my cursor here. 0.77% of the entire water globe, that is water bank of the world. World water bank. 0.77% is in the cycle. Means the sun in the ocean, it evaporates, makes cloud, it goes somewhere. It again falls back into the ocean or on the glacier. It is not available. The available water is only 0.34% of the entire water bank. And it is this 0.34% that is a tug of war between the domestic irrigation, industrial demands, and of course entertainment and water sports, etc. Suppose, if this is the available water, which is a constant, ever since the birth of the planet, the world water bank is a constant volume. Water does not change, it does not add up to anything. Except it adds up to our worries, because we do not handle it well. Of course, some of the earlier speakers have said the environmental need, fish and aquatic life will also need water. So suppose if, if in 1900, if this was our industrial requirement, this was ag agricultural and this was domestic. By 2000, all our uh, requirements have grown because of, of course, the growth of the population, etc. And by 2100, all these three requirements grow and compete with each other. Where the available fresh water is not increasing even by a molecule. So, the slogan for the day, I would coin here is, Jal hai to kal hai. There is no tomorrow if we do not have at least respect for what preservation and conservation and everything will look after subsequently. And I have a definite, a kind of point to the urban planner that urbanization promotes desertification. We had constructed industries and houses if you don't build industries, there is no employment. Then you will have to have houses. So the earthen surface is being covered with concrete. Then water, water, water falls. We have roads and pavements. And the whole thing ultimately funnels the rainwater straight into the river, into the ocean. <laughs> Anyway, we'll see that later. We have some case studies, what cycle is part of studies and what we can do. These are the four areas I am going to highlight. So, as I say, the covered surfaces funnel the rainwater into the stormwater drains to the river and sea. Soil is losing moisture, leading to subsidence. And this is desertification. So, this is, I have downloaded, all our builders have tons and tons of this kind of peanut, uh, pea gravels. We can make this kind of pavement blocks and you can see the water going through the, and this is what we did, we laid a driveway in a bungalow with this part does not provide for the soil and grass. This block we made provides for the grass to grow between the grid. You can see this here. So I was talking with some architectural friends in Valsar. हमारे तो बदु चोखू जो ही है पानी आवने से हजार सात सत्ता सत्त निकल जाओ जो ही है जावा दो आपने भी ज़्यादा रही सुई नहीं साथे ये तो जावा ना चाहिए पर आउटी पेड़ी ना जावा नो प्रोविजन आपने आजे बना भी रहे आज के ग्रीन लिविंग 
सस्टेनेबल लिविंग इज डिफाइंड एज मीटिंग ऑल योर ड्रीम्स टूडे विदाउट टेकिंग अवे द राइट ऑफ द फ्यूचर जनरेशन टू मीट देर ड्रीम्स वी आर एक्सलेंट एट पार्ट वन टू वी हैव नॉट केयर फॉर द पार्ट टू and therefore i tendered my apology let us understand the urban scenario the average human body produces fecal matter of 85 to 200 grams per 70 kg of body mass now extensive sewer length i'll i'll show you in a, a case a study that the stp is pushed distant and distant and distant so we need more water to push the excreta to 20 km of sewerage land is this civilization is it development this is what urbanization or today's town planning has thrust upon us or rather the future generation let us take bangalore in 1891 the bangalore population was 1 lakh 80000 with the uh, water works supplying 57 lpcd look two days 135 150 liter forget it is an outdated norm present eco village norms recommend 60 liters per capita anybody who is thinking to go to 60 plus is inviting etc so this unshaded part was original bangalore of 1891 as the peripheral areas were added the population grew and lot of corporation development claimed the lpct increased it has gone to 200 plus because the stp was located 20 kilometers away from the main city and i will not comment on the quality of treatment most of it is thrown into the river and go to the sea ultimately we are losing the phosphate so what is the solution and look we are dying to be poor we do not want to get out of the poverty line thank you so when you have instead of 60 you have 150 lpcd you have additional horsepower to pump that volume of water you need additional pipeline you need additional additional collection system bigger storage bigger stp and still not know how is going to work i was last week i was sitting with a retired uh, municipal commissioner who said he had inaugurated 36 sewerage treatment plants and none of them is working <laughs> on top of it 80% of the power bill was dedicated to the pumping system see we want to be poor we want to be pitiable anyway i share uh, i reserve my comments so shakti bhai was with me we went to janand which is from where our present talk begins earlier part what i said was a preamble it is about transdisciplinary studies at village janand which is in the center of kach kach is not what we commonly know as um, gandhi dam and coastal kach what we are talking is in the upper north of samakyari right near the pakistan border in the center of the kach desert where the panchayat water supply is 25 lpcd 
This is something really interesting for all of the students. We we have messed up and we have submitted the apology, so you cannot hold us responsible. But I request you not to repeat the mistakes that we have committed all our life. With 25 LPCD, the only fuel is wood, and there is no wood in the desert. There is no vegetation. Then food, there is no agriculture. And since there is no vegetation, there is no fodder also. So food, fodder and fuel, this was the scheme we are working on. Okay. So this is the catch. This is the Elena Solovi, which was written. The deserts were the face of glaciers. This is my car, I am driving on that Antarctica, which is part of Kutch. So we struck a deal. Bapa, agriculture karwani vaat karo chho, su polo chho. I said, you give us your used water, we will give you water for irrigation. And we used no mix, eco and commerce. So, this was the plan. Here we have bathrooms, these are the toilets, septic tank and the pylon. You can see the green line which takes urine from the commode and excreta as red line. We didn't want to be wiser than the nature. In human body, the nature has two separate tubes for urine and excreta. And in our urban planning, we have mixed them both. So we try to play God without godly wisdom. So this was the pilot plant originally, the plot that we took. Kindly see the uh, cabin here. Clean the plot. Microbial load in one meter cube of soil is same as one kilometer cube of aquatic medium. We have designed STPs and sewer system to push excreta into the water and, and still talk about efficiency. Anyway, you can see the maize which we had grown. Just see. It is a C4 plant. All agronomists for, from Anand Agriculture Institute advise us not to grow maize. I said I'll grow maize because it's a C4 plant. What is C4 plant? We'll talk something. For that, you'll have to give me more time. Now, what was this eight weeks before? With less than 25 LPCD as my domestic volume, it was this. My irrigation volume is zero. Please bear in mind. So, these are the bathroom and basins. Grease trap. We are talking about development. How many builders and projects we have grease trap? Tell me honestly, Gandhinagar with 150 plumbers in their session invited